Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Tom Palladino. Tom Palladino is a scalar light researcher, and you can find out more about Tom Palladino and his work at scalarlight.com. Welcome, Tom Palladino. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, Tom Palladino, what exactly is scalar light? Well, everybody's a scalar energy expert. I always say that to, to begin my talk. <clears throat> Why? It's sunlight or starlight. Mm. We simply don't realize that there's two energies in the universe. Many people understand and accept electricity. Well, that's valid. There's another energy. I call it scalar energy. Um, some people call it chi or prana or zero point energy. But I think the world and, and many people will, will resonate with this statement. Many people see that there's a new technology developing. And we, we had the electrical age over 100 years ago. Now we have the scalar age. And it's my prediction that scalar technology will far surpass the electrical age. Fascinating. Now, where does scalar energy originate? And can you describe its nature for us? Now, I believe it's from God. I believe it's a divine energy. One of the reasons I say that, the stars are perpetual, so to speak. You never see the stars burning out. They'll go through phases. Well, they're powered by scalar energy, scalar light. So if scalar energy is the animating force of the universe that animates the stars, then I'm saying that this is a perpetual energy. Yes, the, the stars are the storehouses of this perpetual energy, but I would say it is of a divine character. It's directly from God. Now, if, if my uh, consideration is, is accurate, then we've tapped into an energy, an infinite energy source that could power the world. Now, what is the difference between scalar energy and electromagnetic energy? I believe all energy initiates a scalar energy. So scalar energy is the first, the primary energy of the universe. And then electricity and magnetism are derivative or the, the, the offshoot or the secondary energy of the universe. So if I had my druthers, I, the entire universe would just use the primary energy, which is scalar energy. Now you are a scalar light researcher. How does scalar energy transmute matter? Scalar energy carries instructions. And if we look at how any matter, whether it's atomic form or it's molecular form, is held in some type of pattern or some type of geometric uh, configuration, I am saying that scalar energy is the information, the intelligence behind atomic and molecular form. So if we look at any physical object, we can change a physical object and in so doing, we transmute it, we change the physical object. How do we do that? By changing the instructions. So if, if, if this represents a physical object and we want to change this, we want to transmute that physical object, we would simply send scalar energy to that physical object and we'll, it would change, it would transmute into another physical form. And I've, I've demonstrated that in my laboratory. And it's quite fascinating. I, I have to underscore that scalar energy is massless. There is no mass. It's non-physical, it's massless. So it's pure energy, it's, it's pure instruction. And it seems to command the universe. I believe it has the, uh, the command, if you will, over atomic and molecular form. So many people nowadays know about Tesla, Nikola Tesla. Yes. And he said, and I'm going to absolutely butcher his quote, but if I can get it right, he said something like, if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, to think in terms of frequency and energy. <laughs> yeah. Which is information. Exactly. And he was absolutely right. He's, he's one of the, uh, he's one of the luminaries that I look up to and, and he's guided my research. Tesla 
actually he began his career with AC electricity, alternating current electricity. Very few people realize that he developed later in his life scalar energy instruments. And in many ways, he was no longer interested in electricity. The, the, the remaining years of his life were spent in scalar energy research. He was the first scalar energy pioneer. He was the first man to harness scalar energy. So he really had two careers, both brilliant careers. You know, he's never been matched, frankly. Yes. Now, of course, in this day and age, we know about Tesla cars and we know that electricity can power cars. We also know about solar panels, that you can purchase a solar panel to harness the power of the sun yes. and, you know, electrify your home. Yes. So you're specifically using a scalar energy for healing. How do you use scalar energy for healing? Okay, I, I want to make this very clear. When I work with my scalar energy instrument, I work with a photograph. You know, we're working with a different science. It's not electrical science. So people will email me a photograph. And I actually take a photograph of a person or an animal and I place it inside my instrument. So this is quantum physics. This is quantum mechanics, if you will. This is scalar energy science. And I can access their force field on a photograph. Now, remember, everything I do is non-physical. So a photograph captures their force field. And I simply access the, the photographic force field. So I am working exclusively by way of photographs in this new science. And I'm able to change, transmute physical forms that I identify on a photograph. That's fascinating. I know that um, I work for a healing center in Costa Rica. And before anyone gets there, um, they fill out a form and send in their photograph. And I will sit there and look at their photograph and read what information they put on the form. And then I'll sit there for an hour or an hour and a half and write a medical intuitive reading on that person. But primarily I'm looking at their photograph and communicating from my soul to their soul and asking, what does this person need to know in order to get better? So a lot of people don't realize that your photograph reveals pretty much everything about you. Wouldn't yes, you it agree? Does. <laughs> yes, it does. A photograph is your real time copy. My photograph captures my soul, my mind and my body, the constitution thereof at that present moment. So a photograph is your snapshot in time, the particular moment in time. Now, what I've discovered with photographs, it always reports the current time, the current moment. Mm -hmm. People send me photographs that might be 20 years old. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not capturing time 20 years ago. The photograph always captures your constitution in real time at the present moment. Exactly. Now, let's go back to talking about scalar energy and natural healing. How does scalar energy, scalar light, turn on the ability to form our own nutrients? I can detect on a photograph elements, let's say carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen. And I instruct those elements on a photograph to rearrange into a vitamin, that's transmutation. So I take one physical form, the elements in our body, and I rearrange those into antioxidants, minerals, amino acids. So everything in a scalar energy force field is so efficient. Okay, there's no wasted motion. There's no time, time is not of the essence. And all action is instantaneous. So I simply download instructions into the photograph and the elements that pre-exist, you know, we, we are composed of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, et cetera all of those elements will reconfigure, will rearrange themselves into a molecular structure of a micronutrient. Now, many people listening to this show may be uh, familiar with forms of energy healing, such as Reiki. Many people, Reiki is practiced all over the world. It's, a, again, it's non-tangible, but the results are definitely uh, can be measured. 
um, how does scalar energy and your work, um, how is it similar or different from Reiki healing energy? Okay, L let me just use the term faith healing or um, uh, uh, energy healing through perhaps laying of hands on people. <clears throat> If the animating force in any type of healing art is scalar energy, then our approach is the same. You know, there's modification. So I have an instrument that can capture and broadcast scalar energy. Some people have healing hands, you know, a gift from God that can broadcast scalar energy. Yeah. But the, the animating force behind healing is scalar light, scalar energy. It's not electricity. So if somebody says, I have the ability to touch you and heal you or, or prayer, prayer is a form of scalar energy, scalar light. I can pray from you, for you and you would be healed. That is a scalar energy administration. So my instrument is the scientific analog of spiritual prayer. Fascinating. So basically what you're saying is that it's the same thing. Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes. But one of the things that we know uh, from vibrational medicine is that everything, you, me, a vitamin, a medication, is a vibrational in, mm -hmm. uh, interference pattern. Yes. And that you can, we know from scientific research, for example, that you can either give the person uh, the medication, the drug, or you can give them the vibration, and it both will work. This is the fundamental principles behind, behind sound healing. This is the fundamental principles behind homeopathy or flower essences. Yes, yes, and, and that's a good point, which is an information system. Whether it's a, a flower essence, a, a homeopathic remedy, all of those carry information. I, I've always thought that the, the underlying uh, uh, force behind any homeopathy homeopathy is scalar energy. Homeopathy is really the science of scalar energy. That is, if you continually dilute a, a reagent or a solution, but in some way you potentiate it every time you dilute it, that's almost counterintuitive. Well, what you're doing is you're potentiating its scalar energy instructions, its scalar energy force field. So homeopathy really is the science of scalar energy. So Tom Palladino, you're a scalar light researcher. Can you walk through our audience? If someone became your client, mm -hmm. what are the steps they would go to? It's very simple. You simply email us a photograph. Again, you're gonna send us a photograph. The age of the photograph doesn't matter. I actually take your physical photograph and I place it in the instrument. Now, once we do that, the instrument will read, will understand your character, okay? Will access your force field. Okay, and in so doing, when we access your force field, we can balance your seven chakras, your meridians. We can break apart microbes. We can assemble nutrients in your body. Um, many times people say that uh, by, by uh, a scalar energy session that their brain waves are, are at peace or they have a sense of peace and uh, tranquility after our sessions. All of this uh, begs the, the question, well, what happened? It's a scalar energy force field that you've been immersed in. It's a very powerful scalar energy force field. And it's different than that of electricity and magnetism. So the outcome is different. And um, you know, we, we offer people free sessions so that they can experience this with, with, uh, without any obligation. Now, I know, for example, many healers such as myself, I'll do distant healing. So for example, a couple of weeks ago, I did a distant healing on a baby. <laughs> so a baby's young enough that they have no conscious awareness that anyone's doing anything <laughs> for them. Yes. Maybe they know their mother's holding them and feeding them, but they are, you know, it's not like there's any placebo effect. <laughs> right, right. right? But I can, I can do distant healing and then I'll hear from the mother or the grandmother, you know, the baby is doing so much better. So how does your work with scalar light differ or is it similar to distant healing work that many of us master healers have done for decades? You know, in, in that case, it's, it's quite similar. Um, why? Because you're doing this with prayer intention. 
And again, if that's the case, you know, I'll let you speak for yourself. If it's prayer and intention, that's a scalar energy broadcast. That's a scalar energy ministration. So I do it by way of an instrument and you do this by way of your talent, but the outcome is, is always advantageous. You know, again, you're working with an energy source that's divine. This is an infinite source of energy. Yeah. And I believe it's directly from God. So if you're working with God's energy, the outcome is going to be favorable. Yeah. How, how, how could it be? How could it be unfavorable if you're in alignment with God's energy? So usually what I'll do if I'm doing a distant healing session is I'll ask for a photograph of that person. And, and I, I don't want anybody else in the photograph like because yeah. I don't want to read anyone else's energy. And then from that photograph, I'm going to be reading what's going on with that person on physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual level. And yes, I do prayer, but I'm reading all the, what's happening on all these different levels and then doing literally energy healing to balance the energy. So when, when you're doing, working with your instrument, are you reading what's happening and then balancing the energy as you see it? The energy does all of that for me. And, and what I'm going to share with the audience is there's no human ingenuity to this. The instrument, the energy automatically does that. And it, it really is a blessing. And it, I, I favor that type of outcome because I don't have to put in my, my theories, my thought, because I am fallible. If it's God's energy, it's infallible. So when I'm working with a fundamental force in nature, scalar energy, I am. I allow God to do the, the healing. He does. And I simply step aside. This, this is the, the beauty of, of, of scalar energy. You know, I know many people are, are they're great computer programmers and many people are familiar with technology. Yes, you have to have, you have to have an input to technology. There, there is a limited input that I have with my instrument. But after that input, I step aside. Because once you program these instruments, you, you do nothing. Don't interpret for them. God, the all-knowing, knows what to do. I just really love that explanation, Tom Palladino. I remember one of my mentors in healing said, our job is to show up and get out of the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Out of the way. Yeah. Yes. So, you got to take your ego out of it. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And what I, what's kind of fun for me when I'm actually doing energy healing on a client, um, if I shut my eyes and, uh, and observe the process, so if, if let's say somebody's in my healing room and I have my hands on them, if I shut my eyes and observe the process, this is what I see. Not that I'm doing it wrong, right, or indifferent, but what I see is on another plane, there are angels and they are literally, they're beings of light, beings of light and they're doing light healing on the person and i never tell the angels what to do i literally just watch it yes <laughs> just like when you go to the movies you're just watching it right. and it's quite fascinating to me because yeah. the best analogy that i could uh, explain for the audience about what i'm seeing is that if you watch a xerox machine you know, a Xerox machine will go, you know, from maybe left to right and back to right to left, and it'll just scan the light will yes. scan the person. Yes. And the so and it's it's different colors. They're doing different things. Sometimes there'll be many beings of light. Sometimes there'll be just a few. But it's it, to me, it's part of the fun of being a healer is just watching it <laughs> yes you you have to be in agreement with god and god is the healer you assist yes you are called upon in your role but you certainly never take the position of god and this is why many faith healers they're very they're very direct they have a very simple approach they put their ego out of it and that's why they're successful faith healers they're not healing you it's god Absolutely. Now, how does scalar energy allow Tom Palladino to enhance energetic, energetic state of being by way of their photograph? Okay. 
So when people send me a photograph, <clears throat> I, I have a process where I work with them 24 hours a day. One hour a day, I will balance their chakras or their meridians or, or balance their brain waves. <clears throat> Another hour, I address microbes. I will uh, transmute uh, viruses, bacteria, and fungi. And the remaining 22 hours a day, I work on nutrients. I, I provide, I assemble, I transmute nutrients. Now, that's a 24-hour session. So you're under the care of a scalar energy force field 24 hours a day. And this allows me to access that dimension. Okay? Right now, if, if we wanted to communicate, we're communicating through some type of telecommunications that's using electricity. In a scalar energy force field, it's much different. Communication is instantaneous. There's no loss of signal. It's perfect information. Everything is perfectly received and perfectly understood. So when I'm sending you scalar energy instruments, uh, energy through my instruments, that scalar wave is perfectly received and perfectly interpreted. So this is truly fascinating work. And you know, every healer that I interview here on the Natural Healing Show has a story about how they got interested in their work. So what was your background before you became a scalar light researcher and how did you get into this work? Nikola Tesla was my impulse as a kid. I read about Tesla back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, my goodness, why don't we know more about this? And then throughout my university career, I, I continued on to, to, I had a fascination with Tesla. And, and I said to myself, well, I'm gonna have to do this alone because very few people have taken up this type of study. So um, sadly, it's, it's, been a, um, it, it's been a lonely journey for part of the way. Now it's becoming much more broadly accepted. And if you could imagine back in the 70s and 80s, very few people understood Tesla or wanted to devote themselves to a career to, to study Tesla's work. Now that's changed. Anyway, long and short, Tesla was my impulse as a youngster. Um, I followed up on it. It's been a, uh, a career that's been uh, of merit, I should say. I'm happy that I've chosen this path. It's been a lot of work. I'll be the first person to tell you, if, you're, if you don't have a work ethic, don't, don't bother. Don't bother. But it's rewarding. Now, that's so funny because just intuitively, I asked you about Tesla because his work is well known, you know, today with Tesla cars and with his work with solar panels and so on. Um, but that's quite interesting that you took his work early on and brought it into the healing field. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I don't have a car, but I do have a healing instrument. You're right. So did you develop this healing instrument yourself? Yeah, yes, I, I have a brilliant engineer that I work with. And I have to say, I, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to find um, another inventor, an American inventor. His name is Hieronymus. And at that time, I, um, his wife, he was deceased, the inventor. <clears throat> but his wife was living in the state of Georgia, and I visited her. And she more or less passed the baton to me. Mm -hmm. She saw that I was interested, and she shared many of the instruments and many of her husband's notes with me. And um, um, I'm all the better for it. So it was really Tesla who really was the first one to harness this energy. Um, in some sense, uh, Galen Hieronymus was his contemporary, but I don't think they ever met. So if you will, I, I met the American version of Nikola Tesla. His name was Galen Hieronymus. I never met him, but I met his wife. Fascinating. Now, you gave us the example. So if someone were to come to you for treatment, they could send you a photograph from anywhere in the world and your instruments would do the work. And you yes. mentioned that they would be treated for a period of 24 hours. Would yes. there need to be repeat treatments? Would they need to change their lifestyle, their diet, their supplements? Oh. How does that we, work? Everybody's an individual. So, I, And I don't provide health um, consultation because I, I'm not a health expert. So I simply say to people, I will do my best as a scalar energy researcher on my end with your photograph. By all means, if you need medical advice or you need health coaching, go ahead and get that in, in, in the arena that, that you need that care. When people send us a photograph, the nice thing we tell them is 
that's your obligation. Besides praying and, 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 and living a, a normal and sensible lifestyle, you don't have to do anything else. Let us do the work. So many people like this because they, they don't necessarily have the, the time to be so fastidious. So people would much, many people would much rather just send us a photograph, email us a photograph, and allow us to access their, their quantum realm. Now, how does or does Scalar Light and your work actually work on the emotional level? Mm. Because as we know, emotions can shut down any process in the body. Yeah, yeah you're right. I believe uh, uh, the chakras in our brain waves are controlled by scalar energy. And when you can access the brain waves, the mind, the brain waves accordingly, the chakras and the, the chakra waves accordingly, then you can have a direct influence, a direct interface on emotion. So if a scalar energy instrument downloading information into a photograph will serve to balance our, our chakras and our mind, then that has a favorable outcome on our psychology, on our viewpoint on life, on our emotional, on our emotional constitution, on our psychological disposition. So I've always said that scalar energy someday will be the pathway to human health. I think the way we can repair the mind is by scalar light. What is the future of scalar energy in your professional opinion and how will its acceptance serve to change the world for the better? Once this technology is embraced, the world will see that it can perform so many work functions, okay? So many, there's such capability here and the work function capability is phenomenal. It far exceeds that of the computer of any electrical instrument. So scalar energy, and mark my word, scalar energy allows us to have control, mastery over the universe. And once you can master this fundament, scalar energy, you have control, you have really, it's almost as if you have angelic control over nature. And I mean that, right? because this is the first principle that, that governs this. These are the first instructions that govern nature. And once we control scalar energy instruments, we will have mastery control over the universe. What unique experiences have you witnessed when working with scalar energy in your laboratory? Um, I live in Florida. Many times in the summer, if there is a lightning storm, my instrument, if it's on, will, if you will, come alive. And sometimes I ex experience little um, lightning bolts from my instrument and my laboratory starts to fill up with ozone. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the ambient uh, atmosphere is being transmuted into ozone. And I'm starting to get an interface between a, an electrical storm and my instrument. So the two are communicating, if you will. I've, I've observed that many times in my laboratory. It's, it's quite fascinating. Well, as you know, from a physics point of view, there's only one energy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> And that's wrong. And you know, I, it, we're, we're going to educate the, the scientific community. There's two energies. And if you look in most textbooks today, they only mention electromagnetic energy. Well, electromagnetic energy is the subset, the derivative of scalar energy. The, the initial energy of the universe is scalar energy. And we're, we're gonna correct that, but um, that is a gross oversight by the scientific community. So one of the things that we know is, and I'm probably gonna butcher this as well, but I believe that it's only 4% of the known energy in the universe can be quantified or measured in any way. So sometimes when we're talking about these healing arts, like we discuss on the natural healing show, such as Reiki healing energy or scalar light healing energy, right. again, 96 science scientists will say that 96 percent of the known universe cannot be quantified or measured so how does scalar light fall mm -hmm. into this unquantifiable mysterious uh, powerful aspect of of life yeah well uh, according to that statement then perhaps scalar light would would fill that void so to speak um if if you consider my statement all energy in the universe initiates as scalar energy. 
So if you look at all the stars, the infinite number of stars, those are scalar light factories, so to speak. So what powers the universe? What gives life to the universe? Scalar light that is stored, so to speak, in the stars. There, there have been many, and, and I, I believe Tesla saw this, there have been many scientists that have said, look, you know, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, call it what you will, electromagnetic energy cannot power a star. The stars would have run out of that power. Mm -hmm. Electromagnetic energy, it, it dies, it decays, it, there's a weakness to the signal. The stars just, they keep, they, they keep broadcasting energy. How is that possible? It's only possible if it's a perpetual source of energy. The only way you can have a perpetual universe is with a perpetual energy, which is scalar energy. Electromagnetic energy experiences entropy. It dies, it fades off. You cannot have a perpetual energy okay, and, and expect that, that the world would, would be oblivious to that. The perpetual energy, scalar energy, gives us life to this perpetual universe. If, if you were to cut off the perpetual energy, there would be no more universe. Everything would stop to function. And I, that's so apparent to me. I don't know why all walks of life don't see that. In order to have a perpetual universe, you need a perpetual energy, scalar energy. So wonderful, fascinating information. Now, Tom Palladino, scalar light researcher, can you explain for our audience how scalar energy is actually everywhere and how it yeah. transcends time? Okay, it, it, scalar energy has to be everywhere because everywhere needs instructions. If, if you don't have instructions, then the universe falls apart to chaos. Those are some of the early messages that I received from Jesus and Mary. You have to have constant communication in the universe to have this constant harmony. Once you cut off scalar energy, you have chaos in an instant. Okay, so scalar energy is the all, it's the presence of God. It's, it serves to instruct the universe to bring order out of chaos. Now, with that in mind, um, I have developed a miniature star, if you will, and I'm able to access that dimension of perfect instructions. Now, you know, would, I just have to have a, a side comment because um, I've done my work full time for 28 years and probably about 10 years ago, I thought, you know, I really want to understand what it is that I'm doing. So I signed up for some beginner level physics classes mm -hmm. to, at Emory University to try and understand healing energy and how it works from a physics perspective. So can, and, and a lot of what you're talking about, I think can be applied to any healing energy, right? Yes. So yes. How, how can scalar, so you say that scalar energy is actually the cause of time. Yes. And <laughs> I know for myself, when I was taking even the beginning level physics classes, I was just really, you know, having trouble wrapping my head around all these big concepts. But yeah. how, how does scalar energy, in your opinion, cause time? Yeah, it's so simple. If you look at any fundament of nature, it's simple. God is simple. He created a simple universe. Um, it, creation, it, if you will, will expand and become more complex. So the simple explanation is this. If, if my hand represents a scalar wave, Rotate that scalar wave in one direction, time moves forward. Rotate that scalar wave in the opposite direction, time moves backwards. If the scalar wave is standstill, so to speak, without motion, time is standing still. It's that simple. So scalar energy is a flow of, of time, like a, a river is a flow of water. Rotate scalar energy one direction, time moves forward. This is one of the messages that God gave me. Since we have the stars that are in uniform motion, then time throughout the universe as we know it is moving forward in a uniform pattern. If God stopped the, those stars from rotating, so to speak, then time would stop. If God decided to reverse that, that rotation, time would go back. It's that simple. It, all creation has to be simple. 
Now let's bring this back for our audience to natural healing. Can you give us some examples of clients that you've worked with just using their photograph who experienced healing benefits? I'm rather pr proud to say this. We've been working with an HIV clinic in Delhi, India. Delhi, India. Mm -hmm. now, I, I want to caution the audience. I've never been to Delhi, India, nor have, have I met any of the people that I've been working with in Delhi, India. I only work with their photograph. Mm -hmm. It's an HIV AIDS clinic. And after working with them, some of these people have gone on to get an HIV test and their HIV test is negative. They show that they have no HIV viral load. Now, from my laboratory, I've been able to identify HIV and break down the molecular bonds from my laboratory on their photograph. But I've never been to India and I've never met any of these people. So someday science is gonna to have to catch up to this and, and try and make an explanation how if I can eradicate if I can remove the HIV virus in my laboratory on a photograph, does that really translate to improving somebody's health halfway around the world? Now, so what, that, that begs the question. Yes. Now, what was your, what has been your experience, of course, over the past, you know, year or so, on a global level, we've been experiencing the coronavirus pandemic, and some right. countries have had it way worse. What has your, been your experience using uh, scalar light with sure. COVID-19? Yeah, the COVID-19 virus is, is like any other virus. If I can identify it with my instrument, I can, then I can transmute it, and I have. So I can identify the COVID-19 virus on a person's photograph or the photograph of an animal for that matter. You know, this is a zoonotic organism. And I can break down, I can transmute the COVID-19 virus that is found on a person's photograph. And I would say uh, the, the people that were with us during the pandemic, the, those that sent me their photograph, they are healthy. They're, they're, they're in good health. Can I make a, a, a direct reference to that? I only can make a direct reference to my laboratory work because these people I've never met, I did access their photograph and I was able to eradicate the COVID-19 virus on their photograph. But you see, our understanding of scalar energy is, is dissimilar to our understanding of electromagnetic dimension. So when we have two dimensions, we have to have two definitions and hence we need two languages to describe each dimension. And I may be getting into controversy here, but as you know, um, there's been a lot of controversy uh, with experts arguing about whether COVID-19 was man-made or whether it came from animals. As you've worked with COVID-19 with your scalar light instruments, what has been your experience of this virus? I cannot distinguish if it was a, a, a wild type virus or if it was a, a genetically engineered, <clears throat> but I believe there's a great deal of investigative reporting now that's, that's coming to light, and it's been said that this has been genetically engineered. If you ask me, with the evidence that I see, not my evidence, but the evidence that is coming in, it appears that this has been a man-made virus. Now... You talk, we talked about Nikola Tesla. How did other researchers and physicists of the past use scalar energy? Um, you had a man by the name of Thomas Moray out of Salt Lake City. He was able to capture scalar energy and power um, light bulbs, even power a, a garment iron, if you will. He demonstrated that a number of times um, in the state of Utah. But his work never caught on, and I, I, think, um, I think there were powers that be that were against this, because it, it, again, this type of technology is someday going to be considered to be a threat to the military industrial complex. So Thomas Moray was a brilliant scalar energy researcher. He was able to harness the energy of the stars, and he could have powered a, a home or a factory with this energy, but he never ex received the acclaim that he should have. What a shame. Now, how does scalar energy assemble and maintain all physical forms? 
Scalar energy is the mind of God, it's instructions. Um, I'll give you an, an example. If you look at a snowflake, all snowflakes are unique. There, there are not two snowflakes that are identical in composition. Why? Well, it's the scalar energy that, that will imprint, will form some type of uh, geometric pattern on each snowflake. So if you look at the unique design of snowflakes, all of that is made, all of that is the handiwork of scalar energy, scalar light. So if scalar energy can impart a unique instruction on each snowflake, then scalar energy can impart unique instructions on, on atoms and molecules and compounds and elements and, and isotopes, if you will. So scalar energy, again, is the mind of God. Before you have a physical geometry, you have to have instructions. So many times I call scalar energy the architectural plans of the universe. Before you build anything, you have architectural plans, you have intelligence. Well, scalar energy serves as the intelligence of the universe. Scalar energy serves as the architectural plans of the universe. Now, you mentioned that if someone sends in your photograph and your scalar light instrument basically sends healing energy to that person, that it can balance the seven major chakras and the 12 meridian points. Mm -hmm. How does your instrument go about balancing the chakras and the meridian points? Yeah. Yeah. And not to be curt with you, automatically, instantaneously, on its own. Mm -hmm. I literally place your photograph next to, I have Tesla coils. I literally place your photograph next to the Tesla coils. So you're being downloaded this scalar energy on your photograph and the energy knows what to do and it automatically balances your seven chakras in your brain waves. I literally, I walk away from one hour from my laboratory and I might do some computer work or some research elsewhere. And I come back in an hour and your chakras are balanced. And I, I, I've done nothing except turn the instrument on. So how can you tell when someone's chakras are balanced after the treatment has been completed? Uh, I could um, look at their photograph, if you will, with the instrument and ascertain if there has been a chakra enhancement. Sometimes I've been able to do that. But the, the real key is this, and I'm results driven. I want people to respond to me. I want people to say, Tom, I'm sleeping better. Tom, I'm, I'm at peace. I feel tranquility. Whatever you did to my photograph, I don't know, but I don't have depression anymore. Or Tom, I no longer have a hankering for cigarettes and alcohol. So those are the results I'm looking for. And, and it's the key is the testimony of the person. Now, just like during his lifetime, I, I believe Nikola Tesla died broke, didn't he? Yes, he did. He died broke. So he had, you know, nowadays we recognize that he was this great genius who's mm -hmm. were pioneered so much of life that we experience today and your work is very outside the mainstream of certainly traditional medicine what sort of reception have you received for your work amongst people it's been a, a glowing response uh, and god bless the grassroots effort this is a people movement um, and really, it's it's chiefly a, a, a grassroots movement. Um, I don't receive help, any other outside help. I won't even mention it. It's people. It's all people driven. Have you taught your uh, techniques uh, or, or shared your instrumentation with other practitioners? No, no. Um, there's not been any interest, and I, I really would have to gauge really sincere interest on on somebody's part to, to who would want to devote their life to this. This is not a hobby, and you know I, I'll use the term dilettantism. I, I don't have time for anybody who wants to pick this up as a hobby. So you have to be very serious minded. This is hard work. This is it's an emerging science. You have to devote yourself to this. But I'm, I'm waiting for that for that group of people who want to devote themselves to this. Have you published any research papers about your work? No, and, and, and I won't, and I'll tell you why, for a number of reasons. Number one, my work is in the quantum realm, the scalar energy realm, that's not even recognized. Even if I publish something, it, 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 the, too often it's misconstrued as electromagnetic behavior, it's not. So 
until the world accepts that there's another dimension, scalar energy dimension, I really don't want to present my work um, because it, it's just falling on deaf ears. It's, it's really been a waste of time. What I do uh, acknowledge is the testimonies of people. I think the testimonies and I think the, the, the results that people are getting, okay, that is really what's, what matters right now, whether it works or not. Does this work? Yes. My website has three or 4,000 testimonies. They're all, they were all given uh, without coercion. So what's my point? Well, after three or 4,000 testimonies, there, there's something here. So I'm results driven. I rely upon people to provide their testimonies. Um, nobody in the scientific community has, has reached out to me, and nor do I really uh, would anticipate that they would because it's, it's a new science. They, it's so poorly understood is what I'm getting at. So Tom Palladino, scalar light researcher, any final thoughts for our audience? Any message that you really want to get across, especially to our audience who's <clears throat> interested in natural healing? You know, it, well, we'll keep on with your, your the natural healing and, and keep keep on with, with that with that mind about yourself and about humanity. We we need to start thinking outside the box. If there's one thing we learned from the the pandemic, um, we, we learned that united as a group of people, we can get through this, okay? I, I saw nothing but heroism um, throughout the medical community. I, I give them all the credit in the world. So keep thinking outside the box, people. I wanna um, welcome people to the website. Anybody in the world can sign up for 15 days of free sessions, anybody in the world, mm -hmm. scalarlight.com. Visit the website, email us your photograph. There's no obligation. You decide if this is of merit. Beautiful message. You've been listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. We've been learning about scalar light healing energy and Tom Palladino, solar, scalar light researcher has been sharing his insights. You can find out more about Tom Palladino and his work at scalarlight.com. And remember that everything in the world is energy and frequency. And when you want to get better, naturally change your frequency. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.